Hi everyone, this is Julianne Victoria of Through the Peacock's Eyes. Welcome to my channel. So in today's blog, I'll be answering another couple of questions and discussion stemming off of that as I have been lately. So Marina Moon, and Marina Moon has a new YouTube channel called Marina Moon Tarot. So do check her out and subscribe to support her. She, one question she asked, the first one she asked, and I think it was on my Instagram account. She said, what are my methods um, to developing intuitive abilities if any. So for me, if you listen to some of my other vlogs, um, especially the one about my spiritual path, is I've always been highly intuitive, you can even say highly psychic, um, since I was a little girl. It was never, none of that was ever shunned in my family. It wasn't thought it was weird. It was actually thought it was sort of normal. So it's, it's not like a lot of highly intuitive children, you know, they kind of grow out of it because it just doesn't fit with the people around them, their upbringing, their, their society, etc. Um, so I've always had highly developed intuitive abilities. However, meditation, and you probably heard this from many other people before, that meditation is a key practice in developing your t intuitive abilities. Whether, you know, it's, it's clairvoyance, clairsentience, claircognizance, you know, whatever it is. If you're highly empathic, meditation can help you to get grounded in your physical being so you can sort out what you feel that is yours and what you feel that is other people. And listen to my, the last vlog I did on um, respecting boundaries and protecting yourself from negative energy because that will be very helpful for you highly empathic people out there or highly sensitive people. So meditation is what I recommend for methods for developing your intuition. That can be you know, any form of meditation. If you've never meditated before, you might try you know, Vipassana meditation or Shamatha or you know, if you just want to sit at home and sit in silence and observe your thoughts. And often people say you know, meditation is clearing your minds, but thoughts will come in here and there. Just notice them and let them release. And then you start to notice that impressions come in or visions come in and those can be intuitive or psychic messages and then you can start playing with it um, and practicing getting into that meditative state to purposely pick up intuitive information. Now that sounds easy but that can take months, that can take years, several years to develop but meditation is the key thing, the key method for developing your intuitive abilities. Um, just looking at my list here Make it a practice, make it a practice. But grounding is important too. So not just for the highly empathic people who are picking up all sorts of stuff from everyone around them all the time. Um, but as you de and develop your intuitive abilities, and we all have intuitive abilities inside of us, you're just trying to access them, you do still wanna stay grounded in your being. And that's meditation helps that. So you're both in your body and picking up other information, whether again it's other people's feelings or it's just whatever messages you need to hear at this time. Okay, um, another thing that can help, and I wrote this down, um, just kind of as I thought about this question, you know, I hadn't ever in my life said I'm going to do this to develop my intuitive abilities or I'm going to do this to help, you know, sort out my empathic abilities. But I had to, so I had to think about this and reflect upon the past of what actually helped me in my development, in fine tuning my intuitive abilities. And that's still going on, that will continue to go on probably forever. Um, but I wrote down, you know, having a, a friend or a group of friends, uh, a support group, so to speak, where you can talk about your intuitive or psychic or empathic experiences. So you get feedback from people, you get, you get affirmations from other people because you may think, oh, you know, th this happened, I, I sense this, and you don't know, you question yourself, you doubt yourself, and then you have someone to talk it over with or a group of people to talk it over with, and they, they all say, oh, I've had those experiences too, or I've had similar experiences. So that getting that affirmation and support can be very helpful as well because if you're by yourself, you don't talk about, and talk about this to anybody, you you feel sort of isolated, you question yourself, you think you're developing it and then you doubt it. So getting that support can be really helpful. 
Okay, then Marina Moon also asked, I think this question she asked on one of my YouTube videos, um, oh, probably after the one where I talk about my, my spiritual path, because I mentioned this. Um, she said, it'd be interesting to hear about some of my astral travel experiences. And I'll say that too has helped me to develop my intuitive abilities. Now, mostly I had those experiences as a child, um, basically throughout my whole childhood. I think as a form of coping with absorbing so much, absorbing family members' emotional distress, struggles, absorbing, picking up on um, all the spirits in the house I grew up in, um, and not really understanding how to manage that. I think what I did as a child is I would go into a meditative state and astral travel. I didn't know what it was called then, but as I learned more and more, I was like, oh, that's exactly what I used to do all the time, every day. So I spent a ton of my childhood, I know this sounds funny, a ton of my childhood in meditation and astral traveling. I've lived several other complete lifetimes in other realms, in other dimensions. So it's not like astral travel where people say, you know, they come out of their body and they're hovering over their body. I've never actually had that experience, but it's like I, I get into a meditative state and I go to another reality, another dimension. And again, I've lived several complete lifetimes in other dimensions. And of course we all do in some way, but I'm aware of what they are. Okay, but that, <laughs> has also helped me to develop my intuitive abilities because I, I was constantly practicing tapping into other energies, other realms, other dimensions. Okay. I can't tell you, anyone out there, how to do that, um, but the meditation. Develop a meditation practice, whatever that is for you. Again, it could be sitting, sitting quietly, a specific type of meditation. It could be moving meditation. I love walking labyrinths when there's one around. Um, so walking meditation doesn't have to be a labyrinth. It could just be you go for a walk and you get in that meditative state. Or you go hiking. Or you know, a lot of people, their exercise routine, especially if it's a solo form of exercise, becomes a meditation, meditation practice. And so if that's what you prefer to do, you know, see what insights come. And also when you do a moving meditation, an exercise meditation, because you're using your body, you do stay grounded. You have to, you have, you know, if you're like cycling, you have to kind of be alert, but you can also be in that zone. You know, athletes call it the zone. That's a meditation state. Okay. Oh, one last thing, just looking at my list here. Journaling. Journaling can help automatic writing. So you just take out a piece of paper, a notebook, doesn't have to be anything fancy, grab a pen or pencil and you just sit and start writing. Start with whatever thoughts pop in your, into your head. It could be, oh, I need to go grocery shopping tomorrow and then that leads to something else and something else. You just write. It doesn't have to be a coherent story. You just start writing, see what messages come in. So you could start it with your mind and then let the words flow, whatever pops into your head. So that's a great way to, in a way, meditate with the writing, the automatic writing, and then you have something to look back on and read to reevaluate, reflect upon, and assess your experience. And you could say, oh no, that was just my anxiety coming through about my test coming up. And then you could say, oh, well, that's very unique. I don't remember writing that. And then you know it's an intuitive insight that came to you. So journaling exercises. And I remembered about journaling exercises because I actually just finished writing the written portion for my tarot course that'll be coming out soon so stay tuned for that I will make a video on it because the journaling exercises in there are to help people to tap into their intuition while reading the tarot so I thought I'd add that in there kind of fit in with this question so yeah meditation that's the answer some form of meditation make it a practice Secondly, you know, have a friend or a group of people you can talk about your experiences with. It could be a tarot group. It could be, you know, a, a meditation group. It could just be a group of friends that you already have who are supportive, who are open to intuitive psychic experiences and talking about it. And then journaling, specifically 
um, automatic writing. All right, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing to my channel, and I will see you back here soon.